Corn stunt has been reported in Texas and Oklahoma and has now been confirmed for the first time in Kansas. Red streaking on tips and edges of corn leaves can look a lot like other production issues, but this disease is transmitted by corn leafhopper. Other symptoms of this leafhopper vector disease can include shortened nodes or little to no grain production. Visually inspecting leaves for the corn leafhopper is possible, but these insects move quickly. Sweep netting plants is an easy way to sample lots of leaves in a short period of time. We typically go across rows with nets, but for corn, it's best to sweep vertically. Start with the net open to the sky and sweep to the top of the canopy. Twist the handle at the tassel, sweep back down, turn the handle at the bottom, and repeat. After 15 to 20 samples, stop, snap the net, grab it tight to prevent insects from escaping, and then shake it into a one gallon Ziploc. Keep the Ziploc moving so insects don't fly or walk out of the storage bag. Store it in a freezer or refrigerator to cool the samples before processing. We will examine these later under a USB microscope. Repeat this process on a couple of spots within the field, especially if you're seeing red leaves. Site identification of corn leaf hoppers is tricky in the field. Even under 5x magnification, it is difficult to see the two black spots, the tip of the head, but it's not impossible. Adults are light yellow in color, and the side-stepping behavior as they walk across the net is diagnostic of leafhoppers in general. As you can see, they're quick to escape, making it difficult for the untrained eye to identify in the field, especially for this new pest. A sweep net will capture other arthropods as well, so bagging and confirming in a controlled environment will help with proper identification. Under 100x magnification, we can see exoskeletons from leaf samples. This tells us that these leafhoppers were developing on the corn plant. This $150 scope allows you to see insect pests across multiple cropping systems. These hollow shells tell us that the leafhopper was developing on corn, but for confirmation, it's best to find actual specimens. From the dorsal view, we can easily see the shimmery, translucent wings of the adult, which go past the length of the abdomen. Looking closer, we can find two diagnostic dots on its head between the antenna and a V identification where the wings meet. The sweep net sample also dislodges several immature stages from the site. Corn leafhopper goes through simple metamorphosis or gradual change from one stage to the next. You can see the wing pads developing, but the coloration is quite different for immatures compared to adults. As immatures molt to new instars, four total for this species, you'll see the wing pads grow larger after each successive molt. In adults, the color is light yellow and very consistent across most of the specimen. The two black eye spots are recognizable from most positions. Sexing specimens is relatively easy. Males have triangular shaped pregenital sternites toward the tip of the abdomen. Females also have pregenital sternite, but an ovipositor is usually brown, sclerotized like this structure here. The ovipositor is used to insert eggs into the corn leaf, usually around the midrib. You cannot see them with the naked eye, so magnification is a must. Here's another angle of the female reproductive parts. It's easier to identify these features in the field once you've trained your eye on what to look for under higher magnification. Here's an adult under 5x magnification using a smartphone. Corn leafhoppers can be tricky to capture as they move quickly. Sweeping or using an aspirator, collect them and put them in the freezer will allow you to examine them more closely. But like other leafhoppers, they have the sidestepping movement when disturbed. And this species will continue to find the bottom side of the leaf, so be patient. Finding adults is the easiest way to determine the presence of corn leafhopper in a field. However, adults are mobile, so using other signs like exuvia will help confirm the potential presence of the species, especially when combined with other plant symptoms like reddening of leaves or stunting of nodes.